If you combine a 60% keyboard, an arcade fight controller, some custom PCBs, and sprinkle that with keycaps, you get this. A 3D printable, open source, laser cut, compact, universal controller. It's sort of a mix of a mechanical keyboard and a budget arcade fight stick, but forced into the constraints of economical parts and versatility. Unlike all the dedicated things it's inspired by, it doesn't do anything particularly well, but at one sixth the cost, I can confidently say it's not the worst thing I've ever made. If you were turned off by a box with arrow keys for $290, or you just want to have a taste of building something at the cost of parts, this doorstop with keycaps is the solution. The main draw here is the circuit board is a discrete input Arduino Pro Micro arcade controller, or it's just a generic USB HID game controller with a modular enclosure. The circuit is designed as pin-to-pin -pin compatible with the open source and awesome Daemon Byte Arcade Encoder firmware by Mick Guyver. I've added RGB LEDs just for clout. Set your IDE to an Arduino Leonardo or Pro Micro and upload the Mick Guyver firmware. Plug this into a Mac or PC and that's it. You've got a nice compact gaming controller with more buttons than you need, but there's even more that you can get from this. Before we move on, I need to explain my suffering, or how we got there. Or not, here's a timestamp to skip all this. Our story involves building some mini arcades and wondering to myself, wouldn't it be neat to remove the control panel and just plop it in into an enclosure and serve as a desktop fight stick. But others have done this and they've done it better and cheaper. And it's really gotta be cheaper to hold market interest. So let's make cuts. First, get rid of the most expensive parts. The arcade joystick and buttons are the top billings here. I had a stab at designing some modular PCBs to substitute mechanical key switches in a build. The WASP layout replaces joysticks and six or eight key spreads replace the arcade buttons. Four key straights add function rows and it's a done deal. I like this a lot. It's an economical approach to replacing a digital four or eight way joystick, but the PCBs as they stand were lacking some refinement of the idea. So I'll just table these boards too. Okay, so put all the keys on a split board for a straight layout or 15 degree offset. Incorporate USB HID controls with an Arduino, because why not, and make it pin compatible with the open source Daemon Byte firmware. Okay, now that makes more sense. But the last and most egregious of problems is to solve the enclosure. It's unreasonable to have a woodworking shop to make a box, and I can't live with myself if I see another one of these, so let's solve the problem of making a case. I want to be inspired, so I looked at a door stopped, and that was it. A 3D printed shell sandwiched between the control panel cutout and a bottom panel, and here we are. This open source enclosure thing, I'm going to call the Mix Stick Box. I'm not sure if calling it the Mix Stick is a good idea, because that was a Disney MP3 player from 2008, or if you just search for it, it's a bulk pack of coffee stir sticks. So we're somewhere in the middle of ambiguity. It's small, compact, and streamlined to feel like a keyboard, but disciplined to be economical and accessible to fit mechanical keyboard parts and versatile enough to fit weird ideas. You can 3D print it with a medium-sized printer, hand cut the rest using templates or the provided vector files, and laser cut your own creation. So let's build one real quick, and then I'll show you some unique and terrible creations along the way. Flip both PCBs to their backside and place all the surface mount LEDs in the middle slot. The LEDs I'm using have a notch cut out indicating which pin is ground. Be sure to get this orientation correct. Anything wrong downstream, the LEDs just don't work. Set your iron to a lowish temperature and use flux to make this as easy as possible. The flux I'm using says no clean, but it's so sticky, I'm gonna clean the residue before soldering anything else. And don't forget to solder this resistor for the LED data line.
Okay, now it's time to put all the key switches in. I did make this five pin Cherry MX footprint on my own and I'm not totally sure if I got the drill diameter correct. These are a tolerance press fit and the tolerance might be a bit of a squeeze to push them in. But nevertheless, push all the key switches in, flush to the circuit board, solder the reset button and D7 button now. These are optional but useful for debugging or adding new features. You're not gonna see them anyway. They go on the back side of the board or front if you want. And solder them from the other side. I'm using Gateron Yellows. Feel free to pat yourself on the back if you prefer something different. Special note, just adjacent to the arrow key layout on the front side of the PCB, this is the LED power jumper. This is a selection jumper for which power you want the LEDs to receive. The VRAW is the USB 5 volt power line, so I'm gonna solder that. Next is soldering the Arduino. You have a few options. If you're using a really large case, you can put this in a socket so you can remove it and reprogram it, whatever. But my enclosure is just tall enough to fit an Arduino with the male header pins in between the boards to connect everything. So go ahead and do that. The next step is mounting both PCBs to the control panel. At this time, you need to decide if you're using the straight layout or the 15 degree offset layout. Doesn't matter. This is a preference thing, but you have to decide now. Either of these mounting panels can be laser cut or 3D printed. Mine are laser cut from 1 8 inch thick nominal high density fiberboard or HDF. I'm using the spacers too, which is also optional, but this helps drop the key switches a bit lower relative to the top side where your fingers go. Mounting the circuit boards keeps their positions in place and makes the next step easier to solder, which, which is electrically connecting both PCBs. I'm gonna solder the two jumper pads between the boards and I'm using LED legs just cut to size to do this. You can use wire, it doesn't matter here. Cut these and be clean with the size. After that, the board is completely soldered and then we'll move on to mounting this into the enclosure. Let's move on to placing this assembly into the enclosure. It's better to program it now, so let's do that. You can find the Daemon Byte Arcade Encoder repository here. Remember to add some addressable LED code if you want the RGB LEDs to function. The Adafruit NeoPixel library will work as a baseline, just don't overdo it. The Daemon Byte code is lightweight and responsive. Adding more fluff to change RGB colors constantly is a trade-off if your code is not optimized. So set your IDE to an Arduino Leonardo or Promicro and upload the MacGyver firmware. Do a function check, make sure all the buttons are working. Now let's put it in a box. I'm sticking with 1 8 inch thick HDF. These vector files are available in the source files. So cut out the top layer, then the artwork followed by a, by a clear acrylic layer of the same thickness or less. This assembly is fastened together with binding posts and bolts in the four corners. If you have a desk mat, then you are good to go from here. But if you play on a table surface you don't want to scratch, I would recommend adding some rubber feet. If you need more button mounts, you can drill through the shell or just add button holds in the CAD before you 3D print it and you're done. I do want to address some frequently asked questions with the design of the PCB. The arrow keys can have two auxiliary keys in its vicinity, meaning if you want these two extra buttons here, solder these jumpers on the reverse side. 
the jumpers identify which buttons on the top row are being duplicated at the arrow key layout. The solder jumpers either move B9 and B10 or B11 and B12 to the arrow key area. The jumpers essentially let you make one of three configurations that look like this. Of course, you can still populate the keys at the top row that are being remapped at the arrow keys. They just become duplicate buttons. Speaking of duplicate, the test points at every key allow you to move a button really anywhere. I know thumb buttons in fight sticks is beneficial for competitive play, and you can do exactly this. Just solder a wire to the respective test pad and another one to ground. Connect a button between these two wires and you have your remapped or duplicated button. If more questions come up, I'll answer them in the GitHub repository. Just make sure to check the links in the video description. This enclosure is for anything and its files are open source. It doesn't have to be with these PCBs, you could fit different encoders in here with some finesse. So here's a universal DDR dance mat that a dog peed on. I saved the circuit board and not the mat because of the P, and now this is a PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube arcade controller. It's just point-to-point -point wiring and did a little bit of testing with the circuit board to see what buttons are what. You can do this with any DDR pad guts, but I found out the universal controllers have more action buttons, whereas the Konami mats only have usually two action buttons mats. So I did mention the modular PCBs a few minutes ago, like the 4x1, 2x3, and 2x4 mounts for keyboard switches. These fit any Cherry MX and compatible clone like Gateron. You can combine PCBs like these to build your own custom layout, something like this. I'm not sure what the use case for is here, maybe a flight controller, or just put this to some high-end mixing equipment and look important. You could make this a macro pad using anti-micro micro X or similar software. This lets you remap any game controller to a keyboard hotkey. The better use case for the modular PCBs are on larger projects like full-scale arcade cabinets. I built these machines to utilize dual digital input controls. Some have traditional joysticks, but the arcades where the intent is playing a home console like a 16-bit one, some games are just better suited with a more precise input method. Directly above the traditional joystick is an arrow key layout, and you can switch to either input based on the game and the input feel you want. I'll link these PCBs in the description. They're not open source yet, as selling them is helping me fund more projects. We can go beyond digital input compatibility, so I made this digital to analog input PCB. This lays out all the arrow keys in a voltage divider so you can force a digital pad in place of an analog input pad. I hacked this reproduction N64 controller to make an arcade out of it. And you can put this PCB in any control panel build. The arrow key layout in the upper right is the N64 D-pad, and below it is the analog pad just mapped to single buttons. The rest of the buttons are mapped out as follows. Oh, and on a side note, the Daemon Byte firmware also has PS3 compatibility built in. Button mapping is slightly different, but it's a plug and play PS3 controller along as being a Mac or Windows USB controller. And finally, if none of these ideas are hitting the mark, this could just be a display box, I, I guess. Okay, that's the wrap. I'll be selling a few of the Mixbox PCBs on my Tindy store, but the enclosure and the design files for this PCB is open source from the get go. However, purchasing them for me helps me recoup some development costs of the idea as well as fund new ones, so I, I appreciate it. Of course, you can just order your own from any PCB manufacturer. I'm not going to recommend any at the moment because the six that reach out to me really don't offer much in compensation. So if this video does really well, uh, maybe we'll both regret not working out those terms. So happy making and thanks for watching.